Hello everyone, I am Claire Heffron, joining you from London. As promised, here is the second session from GBRI on well exam prep, tips and techniques. A few weeks ago, I presented the first part where we went over well exam prep, eligibility requirements and looked at exam prep resources. If you remember in my first video session, I did mention that Jesslyn Varghese was preparing for the well AP exam. Well, he is a well AP now. Let's have a look inside at the well AP exam through the eyes of Jesslyn Varghese. For those of you who are not familiar with well building standards, the well building standard is a performance based system like LEED that focuses exclusively on the health and wellness of the people in buildings. While the LEED rating system and other green building rating systems looks more closely at environmental sustainability, the well standard focuses on the health and wellness of our occupants within buildings. The well accredited professional, a well AP credential, signifies knowledge in human health and wellness in the built environment and specialisation in the well building standard. Let's get started then. Throughout this session, I will ask questions related to well exam prep and Jess Lynn shall share his thoughts. If you have more questions, please type it in here or email us at pathway at gbrionline.org. So Jess Lynn, let's get started. Congratulations, by the way, on your new credential. How hard is the WellAP exam? Thank you, Claire. How hard is the exam? In my experience, I think the exam is not as hard as the lead AP, lead AP exam. So if there were a scale, I would put lead green associate on one end, well AP in the middle and then lead AP on the other end. How long is the exam? The exam is two hours long and has 100 questions that represent all the well concepts, including well certification and synergies. I, I felt you would not need two hours. I took a seven minute break. By the way, the exam clock still runs when you take a break. So I went over questions I marked for review after the break reviewed all answers and still managed to finish 10 minutes earlier. So I felt if you practice taking the mock exams, you know, the timed, especially the timed one, this shouldn't be a problem at all. What comes for the exam and how was the exam like? As mentioned in one of our previous uh, posts on LinkedIn and, and one of the previous courses, the questions on the well exam uh, represent the, the well concepts and well certification and synergies. So on this slide, I have you know included the number of questions that come from each section. Well, this is part of the candidate handbook, so this is nothing new that I'm sharing from my exam. Um, by the way, you know, one cannot share a lot of information from the exam, such as you know the questions and things like that. So within my uh, limitations I will share what I can so I felt the all the questions that came for the exam represented these topics that you see here um, I, I felt the GPRI's uh, exam prep guide uh, did a very good job in terms of underlining the important information that you should know like the fact-based information and things like that from each concept The exam is based on September 2015 Well Certification Guide. For example, the recertification requirements for core and shell projects are different in 2015 as compared to 2016 version. So for your exam, it is September 2015 version, the older version. Also, I noticed there are no questions that required you to pick more than one correct answer. If you're familiar with the lead exam, there are questions where you are required to pick more than one correct answer, such as, you know, choose one, two or three answers. So in this one, there were only questions that uh, you were required to only pick one correct answer or one choice. There are a lot of fact-based questions. By fact-based questions, I mean the important facts that are present 
in every concept. So in the study guide, if you look at, um, before we start every concept, we have some couple of pages of information with respect to why particular, why certain things are important, the background, things like that. So there were questions that represent represented the facts. Also, there were questions differentiating preconditions from optimizations. There are a few simple calculation-based questions. There are a few documentation and verification questions, and a couple of questions related to reference standards. What's the passing score? And if I don't mind you asking, what was your score? You would need to score 170 out of 200 or 85 percent. My score was 95, 95 percent. You also get a category breakup. Mine was 100 percent for uh, three categories, 90 for four categories and not so good for one of the categories. Did you use any test prep? Yes, I used a study prep. I used GPRI's all exam, all inclusive exam prep that included self paced video modules, a standalone study guide, audio files, practice exams, mock exams, memory tools, etc. However, I did not use all of these. Even though these were available, I did not use all of these. Since I take the train to work, I used my commute to read the study guide, the memory sheet to revise, the practice exams or practice questions for every concept, and also the five mock exams. So these helped me to test my strengths and, weak and identify my weaknesses before retesting. Important wellness facts, glossary terms, and documentation were highlighted and marked in the study guide, which helped a lot. What study materials should one use? I personally recommend a study prep like GBRIs, but if you do not plan to spend on study guides or exam preps, you could download the WELL certification guide and standard. Make sure you download the appropriate version for the guide. For example, 2015 version of the guide is required for the current exam. There are also free exam prep resources available on GBRI website and also on the USGPC platform. Understand all concepts, features, and parts within each feature. Try to relate features so that you can memorize them or you can able to recall them. Test yourself by asking questions on the requirements for a particular precondition or optimization or some parts within a particular feature. There are a lot of information and strategies you will see repeated across well concepts. For example, carbon filters. You will see this in air feature under uh, inorganic contaminants. You'll also see activated carbon as a strategy under other air features and even under water features. UVGI or ultraviolet radiation is another example that you would see in air, water and even mind. The mind concept I mean. Particulate matter is another one where you would see under different concepts. Even if you decide not to use any test preps, I highly recommend taking uh, the mock exams, the GBRI mock exams or practice tests. How much time should one study to get a decent score on the well test? How much time should I study? Hmm. This, I feel, depends on so many factors. First of all, it depends on how much time you have. Personally, um, I have been reading the material for a month, month or so, but I did some serious studying for one week. So based on my experience and uh, understanding of your schedule, I recommend for people who are busy with current job or school, just like me, who are full-time students or full-time you know, employees, I would say one hour to study and half an hour to revise and then test yourself. So that is you know, something like uh, five days a week, so one hour, one and a half hours a day times five days a week for four weeks. And then week five and six, I would urge you know, 
mock exams and week seven you're all good to take the test now if you are a part-time student or employee I believe you can knock this off in three to four weeks what you should not do I mean are there things you suggest candidates should not do what you should not do that's a good question um, please don't overload yourself with multiple study resources and guides in my my opinion I think you know most of us have the habit of going online and searching for all the information out there when you prepare for something it's all good but sometimes what might happen is uh, it might make you feel that there's a lot to study and also a lot to go through so you might even feel overwhelmed which is not good um, so for example if you take you know the GBRI's example of itself it has a lot of information but I don't think it is meant for you know all the, I don't think all the tools are meant for everyone for example there are self-paced uh, online modules and also there are audio files so if you have the habit of you know listening to things when you travel then the audio files might be useful for you if you like reading then the study guide might be good for you so having everything sometimes could make you feel overwhelmed and that just that's just again me you know I'm, I know everyone is different another thing I would say is once you have started studying do not procrastinate this could happen especially with the well ex exam prep because um, you start with well certification module which is okay just not that huge but the air module which is pretty big that's the biggest one in the entire you know uh, well exam prep so I could see people procrastinating after that or even when looking at the air, air module so I think it is better to keep up the momentum otherwise what will happen is you'll be wasting a lot of time studying the same thing over and over again what helped you get a high score memory techniques from the exam prep guide helped me a lot for example um, this one I've included on, on the slide here you can see a few numbers these feature numbers mark the cutoff number between preconditions and optimizations in every well concept so for the exam you are required to differentiate between a precondition and optimization and there are hundred features within the well guide mnemonics is another technique that I used to memorize certain elements for the well AP exam so this technique is also mentioned in the um, GBRI study guide so here I have listed three of them so as you can see the first one is come Lear. so that is the mnemonic I came up with to memorize uh, copper mercury lead and arsenic so these are four elements that are tested that needs to be tested as part of periodic testing of water one of the features within the water concept so you can see I took two letters from each of those element elements to come up with two words come layer similarly you could come up with your own terms or words but the point is you have to first you have to find a relationship between these and the uh, information that you want to recall second you should be able to remember both so the second one here is Armenian coal so I use that to remember arsenic mercury nic nickel antimony copper and lead so these are the inorganic contaminants third one is a name that I came up with to remember the six major pollutants within the air concept Nicol Passu so it stands for nitrogen carbon monoxide lead and PASU stands for particulate matter and sulfur dioxide so here I made a slight adjustment as you can see nitrogen first two letters I got NI for the word nickel but carbon monoxide I took the chemical name of carbon monoxide and make it nickel as C to get CO and then uh, LE for lead PASU for the first two letters of particulate matter and then sulfur dioxide so these techniques all these techniques it I think I believe these techniques would only work if you put them to practice if you practice and revise them unless you practice and revise them it may not be as effective 
another thing i did was uh, search for a particular term or keyword or or even a standard within the study guide so especially it helped me to see where all it is mentioned let me give you an example so uh, let's say ashray so ashray is a, is an is an um, reference standard so once i'm done with all my uh, studying all the concepts i want to see where all ashray is mentioned so i just search for ashray and i can see 10 pages you know here and there you know where they talk about the ashray guide so i take note of it similarly i will search for a particular keyword like carbon filters or uvgi or particulate matter so it helps me identify where all within the guide or within the well standard a particular term is mentioned so that i can see the synergy it helps me answer the synergy questions apart from this technique i also made a few stories of my own so when i study i tend to be more visual and then try to make stories so that I can remember preconditions and optimizations. So I have included them. So after the exam, I have created the video here. Um, I have included them on YouTube as well. So you can see them there. Preconditions and optimizations. As I mentioned earlier, this is an important topic for the well exam. So remembering the cutoff number within each concepts can help you identify which feature is an optimization versus which feature is a precondition. Every feature before the cutoff number is a precondition. Every feature after the cutoff number is an optimization. So it's 12 for air, 34 for water, 45 for nutrition, 56 for light, 65 for fitness, 76 for comfort, 88 for mind. So you have to memorize that in the particular order. So now if you look closely, there is a pattern like one, two, three, four. If you break it, break it down into numbers of four, right? So one, two, three, four, four, five, five, six, six, five, seven, six, and finally 88. So that's not hard to memorize those numbers in that particular order. However, in order for this technique to work, you should also memorize the concepts in the same order. It should start with air, then water, then nutrition, light, fitness, comfort, and mind. So what I did is I created a story in my mind to associate these things. So I have included, you know, this here as a story. This might work for you. This might not. That's completely okay again. If stories help you memorize topics and things, then I encourage you to think of your own story, or your own way to memorize this. Anyways, here is my story. 